So like before you were here, before you were working um, at the national office, you were a student at Seton Hall and that's kind of how you got connected to SPO, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, straight out of high school knew that I wanted to go to a, a college that had a strong Catholic presence. And I'd heard about SPO because my oldest sister was one of the first students actually who, mm. you know, lived in household in New Jersey. Um, and so that's part of why I chose Seton Hall to get involved with, uh, SPO. And then, yeah, the rest is history from there. Mm. So how did your life like as a student and kind of like household and the pattern of life in there, like how does that look like the same and like different as like it does Mm -hmm. now in your daily life? Yeah. Um, Well, I lived in household for two years as a student. um, And then after graduating, moving to Minnesota, living with a group of random people, just kind of a regular living situation, Um, I quickly realized that I needed intentionality in my life and accountability. Uh, So for the last several years, I have lived in a young adult household, um, which myself and a friend started because we were like, the benefits of living in household as a student, I realized I like still needed that in my adult life Mm -hmm. um, and in my working life. And so a lot of like my day-to-day life is very similar to you know my time as a student living in household because I still live in household mm-hmm. and what are, what are those kind of like things that you like are similar mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um yeah I think the routine of our life together we do morning prayer mm-hmm. household dinner um we do communal groceries which is like a game changer I think as an adult um and really just like living with a mindset for your roommates um I like to say like we don't just live adjacent together we like are actually living life together um which is a pretty unique way of living I think in our culture today do you think that um could you walk us into a little bit of a a turning point though like in that experience not like the initial conversion I'll get to that in a second but or like full conversion but when you kind of after college and you, you could kind of decide I could live adjacent to people or I could, or really need to have something deeper. Um, could you walk us into a little bit of that, that the pain of that discovery or like what, what led you to, to really decide I want to keep living this particular way of life and I have to choose it and kind of make it happen. Can you walk us into a little bit of that frustration mm-hmm. or pain that you were ex- experiencing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think there was anything like profound or like this was a very distinct event that happened that caused that shift. But realizing as I've gotten older and like become a more more aware of who I am and having a uh, better knowledge of myself, realizing I am very prone to apathy and laziness. Mm. I am just naturally a lazy person. Um, And realizing, like, I don't want to be a lazy person in my spiritual life, in my faith, and in my relationships. And so I, I started thinking through, like, what are ways that would challenge me outside of that laziness and that apathy and started you know that started bringing me back to um living in household as a student and thinking like okay that like really challenged me uh outside of my apathy and yeah I like need that on like a daily basis not just like in my like bi-weekly small group or the like large group young adult events that I go to but like really having people who are calling me on to virtue in like just the routines of daily life when I don't want to wake up in the morning and I don't want to like love the people that I'm with. Um, Yeah. Always knowing that I'll have people with me who are going to challenge me. 